I've got to admit it, this is probably one of the weirdest figures of the year. Here's the intro. Hi guys, Billy back and this time we're going to be looking at the Gans Boy U2 112 action figure by Damn Toys. This was designed by Kao Yokoyama and if you don't know who that is, I've just rustled up a quick 60 second video for you to look at so you can actually see who Kao Yokoyama is and also where the idea for this figure came from. Here's the quick vid. Kao Yokoyama is a Japanese artist whose influences come from a mix of military World War 1 and 2 vehicles plus sci-fi like Blade Runner and Mad Max. Mashinen Krieger ZBV-3000 is a science fiction universe created by Japanese artist and sculptor Yokoyama in the 1980s. It originally began as the science fiction series FS3D which ran as monthly installments in a Japanese hobby magazine Hobby Japan. To develop the SF3D storyline, Kao collaborated with Hiroyoshi Ichimura and Kitanaki Imai. The creators drew visual inspiration from their combined interests in World War I, World War II, armour and aircraft. Kao built the original models from numerous kits including armour, aircraft, automobiles and real space. The designs were predominantly of powered armour suits but Kao also created two lagging walking tanks, anti-gravity flying craft and automated robot walkers. Hiroshi Ichimura and Kutanita Imai added the graphic style and created the background story for the new models. Together, they created a unique series with a very different visual style from the typical giant robot series in Japan at the time. A small but dedicated fan following soon developed. There was great interest among the readers of Hobby Japan to have kits of the designs they saw in the magazine. A small Japanese model company, Nitto, aware of the growing interest, picked up the license and quickly released 21 injection molded kits from the series. These have been heavily sought after in the collecting world. 3.0 also took a punt on a few designs based on his work. Now it's Damn Toy's turn. Inspired by several of his Walker designs and Damn Toy's own astronaut figure, Dragon Lady U2, Cow took elements of both to create this unique 112 scale space droid. The head and the hands are clearly inspired by Cow's work, while the suit itself is actually from the Spaceman U2 figure that they produced. And now Cow looks as happy as a pig in shit because he's managed to create something very unique for the 112 market. Thanks Cal, and now let's get back to the unboxing. Okay, with that out of the way, let's have a quick look at the figure itself. Now it is a 112 scale figure, and I don't normally do a lot of 112 stuff, it's mostly 1.6, but obviously every so often something comes along and tickles my fancy, and this thing just looked so weird that I just, I had to have it in the collection. There was just something it triggered in me, I was just like, that's nuts, I've got to have that. So as you can see, you've got a picture of the figure on the front there, um, I'm not entirely sure the uh, writing here probably says Gans U2 or Damn Toys or Kao Yokoyama. There's his signature down in the bottom right hand corner. And there is a look like a little seal here, probably like a certificate of authenticity for the figure. It's a weird sort of sand coloured background and box. And on the side here you can see it's got a little sketch of a rocket there which is quite cute. And then on the back you've got more pictures of the figure, all your warnings. And then on the other side a little satin doodle. Okay, so let's unbox it and have a look at what we actually get. Okay, it's in a shoebox design. We can do the little iPhone slide, pop. And inside is just a basic clear clamshell with all the items on display. Okay, and here he is out of the packaging and he comes with a few accessories. This is like a little generator that he comes with. Very nicely detailed. Some nice sculpting in the sides here. Really like how dirty and weathered it is. They seem to do really well with the sort of yellow figures. I mean, that 3 Zero did um, Bumblebee, and he looked great as well with all this sort of weathering in. So these look really, really cool. Like this sort of flexible tube here. You can uh, move it around and stuff. It'll work really nice with the figure. It also comes with this shoulder piece here. And this is one of the details I really like. It's that smiley face up there. And that attaches to the helmet. And then this bends around, flexes and then sits on the shoulder. It's supposed to be part of the suit. So they've made it yellow and it's got a really nice brown wash in there to show off the creases and the details. And it comes with this, I don't know what it is. It looks a bit, to me, like it looks like a notepad or something. And you stick that onto his thigh 
He walks around with that on. I'm not entirely sure what it is. It comes with this oil bottle, very dirty and grubby. It has a sort of very matte finish, slight rough texture to suggest that it is an actual fact a really old bottle that he is using. And it's got a little applicator there. And then you get this weird little tube of paste, probably like silicon oil or something to help lubricate the uh, joints. And again, it's got that applicator on there and it looks very dirty, grubby. Okay, let's get the accessories on him and have a look. Okay, I think this goes on the shoulder like so. It's Velcro. And then this part comes up and it just sort of gets stuck to this port here. Pop it in. There it is. Voila. And there's no wire in here. So uh, yeah, it is sort of like a plastic that can be moved around, but it will change its shape if you leave it for a little while and it doesn't stay where you put it. And then this book piece goes on the thigh here. Again, it's all Velcroed on like that. And then this port here takes the port from the generator and you can pop it in like that and then you can carry it around if you so wish. Okay, let's just have a good look at the figure itself. Okay, first let's look at the head sculpt and we can see that it is that sort of weird sort of I think Kao Yokoyama's like droid forward slash walker forward slash sort of scouting droid designs that he's done before. It's very reminiscent of that. He's just sort of harnessed those pieces and he's put it onto like a yellow spacesuit and then giving him some quirky little robot hands, which look really nice. But yeah, very indicative of his style. You can see that the paint application is really really nice it does actually smash of that sort of weathered world war ii style design obviously you've got little bits like this that you need to be careful with because they are you know they look a little bit fragile so you don't want to be smashing them around a little bit this bit here is flexible which is really cool but the only problem with the head is that it does make the figure very top heavy and it can be very difficult to balance him so i am trying now just with one hand to get a balance on him and I've just about managed to do it. So you are going to have to be careful with this. So you probably need to stand with this because he does look like he's very top heavy and you don't want this guy falling off the shelf anytime soon because of these bits here. They look very sensitive and could possibly break if you're not careful. But then we come down and we can see that the suit is absolutely gorgeous stitching for a 112 scale. It's got his logo on the back there. But this weird sort of lumpy thing here, which is looks like some sort of weird little backpack or something he's got. It's very dirtied up and weathered. Got many nice details on here, like the patches on the arms. These buckles here on the front, they're actually real fabric. It's got all this really sort of intricate stitching on there. It's got these two little ports here. And obviously this leg pieces are separate from this bit, which allows for a little bit more articulation, which is nice. If we see the hands, the hands are actually on ball pegs, but those sort of like half and half ball pegs. So you have to be careful with these. They do look a little bit fragile. Let's put one back on there. Let's try and get this back on, slide back in place. There we go. And it moves up and down really nice on that ball hinge, but be careful. You don't want to break that. Then bring down the arm cuff for it all to match. Really like these bits on the legs. The boots look really cool. I would prefer if there was a little bit more ankle pivot in there, but it's not a big deal. Articulation wise, he can look down about that much. I know he looks straight ahead. He can't really look up. He can tilt left and right pretty nicely. He can turn left and right fairly confidently, but you have to be careful because he can hit off this piece here on his shoulder. So be careful when posing him around. The arms go straight up to shoulder length. There is a bicep swivel. There is a double bend in the arms. Get his arms really in close. And I've already shown you the uh, wrist joints work really well. The main restrictions in the suit are in the torso, very much like the uh, Stan Lee spacesuit. There isn't a lot of bend and flex because of the thickness of the suit. And then the legs can go out either side like that, about that far leg can go up about that much again there is thigh swivel this is pretty much like a 1 6 scale body in 1 12 scale 
and there is a double bend and need to get those legs right up but there isn't a lot of movement in the boots but they can turn left and right my main sort of criticism with the figure is that they could potentially have given you other hands to fit on here but also at the same time they could have actually made these fingers articulated i understand the restrictions in 112 scale but also you know time and also money but it would have been nice to have different varying types of hands but these hands are pretty cool he does hold the accessories in them pretty well which is good but it would have been horrible if they'd given you some accessories that couldn't actually fit into the hands and i think this guy can hold that there yeah holds them both pretty nicely and here he is holding the battery pack with it all plugged in you could probably sort of put some more coils in there if you really want but it is a sort of like a flexible cord but it isn't like wired or anything so it won't stay in the position you put it in if you coil it around a few times it will probably unfold and go into this shape anyway but there probably are ways around that if you really want to uh, improve on the actual shape of the uh, cord but just quickly let's have a look and see him next to sam from necker they kind of scale quite well i think and here he is next to a mezco figure and here he is next to the Great Twins T800 Terminator 2 figure. Overall, Kao Yokoyama and Dam Toys have made a really, really nice figure. I'm surprised by the amount of articulation it's got given the thick padded suit that it's wearing, but also I really like the quirky, strange designs. If you're a fan of Kao Yokoyama's work, you, you must have picked this up already. If you haven't, go out and grab it before it's too late because you will kick yourselves if you don't. But also, if you're just a fan of weird, strange and quirky things, this is definitely an oddity and it will look fantastic on your shelf next to all your other weird and quirky things. But also, if you're just a fan of figures in general, there is something here for everybody. He's very cute. All the accessories work well. The fabric they've used is really interesting. The boots are nicely sculpted. The head sculpt is very well painted. I'm, I'm surprised at the detail in there considering it's just a 112 scale head. And overall, if you're just looking for something a little bit different, look no further. You're not going to find any more different than this. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. If you do me a favor now, if you can get the fuck out of my cave. This guy's going to go on the shelf next to all my Mezcos and creep them the fuck out. Bye-bye, guys.